Hello my little kid astronauts, I hope you're ready because today we're going all the way from Earth to the Moon! Whee! Hi, I'm Kitty. Ready, set, and grow! Hello my little kitty kids, it's me, Kitty. K-I-D-I. -I. And today we're gonna go on a journey, an incredible journey of discovery. That's right, we're going from Earth to the moon. And to help us know how to do it, we're at La Cité de l'Espace in France. Today, on the programme, stargazing, rockets to the moon, and telescopes in space. And also, a visit to a space station. Get ready for takeoff. So I hope you're ready because you know what? I know. I am. Let's go. We live on planet Earth. Look at it. Isn't it huge? Well, that's what we think. But planet Earth is actually just a tiny, tiny, tiny little speck in our solar system. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Whoa. Now you see, it looks huge. But trust me, when we pull out, you'll see that we are in fact just ever so small. Look at that. Here we all are on this little dot. Now, in our solar system, you might have heard of other planets which roam around the sun with us, like Venus, Mercury, Earth, of course, Mars, and we also have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Wow! And look at that. Our solar system is itself only a teeny, teeny, weeny speck in our galaxy. That's right, our solar system is actually part of a galaxy. Ah, and here we start to see our galaxy. And the thing is, our galaxy is huge for us, like really immense. But the thing is, for the universe, it's ever so small. Our galaxy might seem huge to us since we are only a teeny weeny 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 speck in it. But the thing is, our galaxy is just one out of millions and thousands of other galaxies. Wow. All of this makes my head spin a bit. I need to sit down. Now, a long time ago, humanity thought the Earth was flat and that if you walked too far, you'd fall into a void. In fact, Earth is round and like every other planet and its natural satellite, the Moon, they all revolve around the Sun. But how do we know all that? Well, by observing space from Earth. And we can do that thanks to telescopes. Let me show you. Welcome to the observatory. Come with me. It's in places like these where you can take a closer look at the stars and planets which lies somewhere in the universe. And for that, we need telescopes, like this guy. <laughs> now, thanks to these, we can take a look at the skies before going to the skies. But wait, how do we get there? Well, we need a rocket. Oh wait, that's Eight, mine. I'm gonna be late. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Shh. 
So, we've created rockets, and they allow us to put humans into space, or even satellites. But wait, what's a satellite? Well, it's a big thing that looks like this. And those guys turn around the Earth and provide us with phone calls and, you know, pictures of our own planet, and so many other things that makes life on Earth so much easier. And to get them up there, we need big, powerful boosters. I think I see one over there. Meet the Eagle Lunar Module. It's in a module like this that the Americans Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins landed on the moon in 1969. That was the first time in our history that humans laid foot on the moon. Wow! And while they were on it, they collected moon rocks to bring back home for analysis and also walked on the moon. And Neil Armstrong, who was the first to do so, uttered these famous words. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And they only stayed on the moon for 22 hours. Hmm, I wonder what I'd say if I'd go on the moon. What would you say? I'd probably go something like, Wow, this is cool! Look, I can jump real far! Let's go! Fifty years on and we are still building increasingly sophisticated tools to watch the universe around us, such as telescopes. Now, the Hubble telescope was launched in 1990 and since then has been joined by the James Webb telescope, which was launched in 2021. That wasn't that long ago. And look, here's one of its mirrors. Hello! But what can we see thanks to those mirrors? Well, let me show you. This is not very comfortable, I'll be honest. That's better. It's impossible to see with the naked eye what's hidden in the farthest reaches of the universe. Over time, mankind has invented increasingly complex machines to discover the secrets of our universe. After telescopes on Earth, it was into space that machines capable of looking far, far away and taking pictures of incredible galaxies were sent. But since 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope has been sending us images of incredible quality, making us realize how small we are in an infinite universe. Whew! Weren't these pictures incredible? Telescopes truly are the best photographers around. And to think that I can't even take a picture of a star with my cell phone. I'm terrible. <laughs> but you know, before going to the moon, humans spend time in space. Well, to be precise, in space stations. Those stations revolve around Earth and are so high up that you can't see them. But would you like to see one? Great! Because I have a rocket over there and we can go. Come with me. <laughs> Here we have one of the very first space stations, well, a replica at least, the MIR. It was launched in 1986 by the USSR, which is now called Russia, and it remained in the skies until 2001. 
many astronauts went on board to study the effects of weightlessness on the human body and also to observe our planet from space. Ooh. Space station is like a motorhome. A motorhome in space! And there are rooms in it to do, well, you know, to eat or to sleep or to do some experiments. And there are even, of course, toilets, which aren't easy to use since, you know, you're floating around. Oh, and there was even a bike. A bike! It was upside down! <laughs> that must have been fun. Oh, living in space must be it must be incredible! Ah. Ready, set, grow. Ready, set, now. I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned because there's more adventures waiting for us. See you then. Whee!